Hello everyone, this is Daniel and welcome back to another quick video about Blender. Today I want to talk about basic transformations, which is something very important in Blender as we use it uh, pretty much all the time when modeling objects. Let's quickly review what kind of basic transformation process we have in Blender. It's quite self-explanatory, but we have translation, that is basically moving an object, we have rotation, and we have scaling. And now, for these transformations, there are two main methods that we can make use of. We can use the transformation manipulators and the keyboard shortcuts. Now, in my experience, uh, seeing other people model and modeling myself, I see that there's differences in the styles and how we use um, these tools that we have. But doing modeling myself for many years, I think I have found some of the more efficient ways to do that. And I quickly want to give my opinion on what's, on what's the best way to manipulate as quickly as possible and as efficiently as possible. Let's quickly uh, review some of the theory on the manipulator though before we move on into the to the keyboard shortcuts. Just so we to review the concepts, you can click on these handles to transform an object. If you want to change the type of transformation to rotation or scale, you can do this by clicking down here, uh, selecting the right one. Then there's two more things we need to take a look at, which is the transform orientation. For example, if we change the local space, uh, we can rotate the object and we see that the handles are now still oriented in the same direction as the cube is. So this can help us to keep, keep the object straight, for example, when we do uh, scaling. There's also another option, which is the pivot point, which allows us to choose around which origin we do our transformations. Per default, it is set to median point, which means that uh, if we have multiple objects, the center of all of them, even if, if there is no origin, will rotate around that kind of middle point. But we can also say that we want to choose individual origins and our transformation will affect all of these objects individually. We can also say that we want to rotate around the 3D cursor. That, of course, also goes for scaling and everything else. So you see the concept, we have first our transformation type, then we have the transformation orientation, and we have the pivot point of our transformation. Now the issue with doing this all with the handles and with the, with the bars here is that it's quite inefficient and slow because you have to make the mouse movements every single time. There is an option where you can just uh, press down the right mouse button and hold it and drag it on the screen that will grab and move all your objects. This might be the only one that's a little bit useful, but otherwise I suggest you to completely stop using all of these. In fact, you might want to push this button here to hide the manipulator as a whole, because I want to show you how to make very efficient use of the keyboard shortcuts, as they're really powerful. Let's go back and quickly review the syntax of this uh, transformation shortcut. Um, basically, you can have three elements in this in this syntax. First, you have to tell Blender which transformation you want to do. G stands for grab, and that's basically the basic translation. R stands for rotation, and S is for scaling. So first, you want to press one of those three buttons to tell Blender what basic type of transformation you want to uh, do. Then next, you move on to the axis constraint. You can now next uh, while you're still in the transformation mode, press another button to limit the, the transformation along one of the axes or multiple axes. We'll get into that in a second. And you even have the option to um, double press buttons or hold shift while pressing these uh, buttons to achieve some additional effects. And finally, we can add enter exact values to, um, to get a specific result. Let's go back to Blender and try this out. I'll start with a new scene, and here's the cube. Very simply, first we can see that if I press G now, I press the G key and I can move my button. So I'm not holding any keys now, basically the cube sticks to my mouse. I have two options from here. If I press the right mouse button, I release my object and jumps back to where it was. If I press enter or the left mouse button, uh, my object stays at the location where I shifted it to. The same thing goes for rotation and for scaling. I press S, I'm in scale mode, and then I press maybe right mouse button to release it back to the original place, or I press enter or left mouse button to have it as it is. 
Now let's see what else we can do. I press G now to move to grab the object and now the next part, the second part in our equation was to constrain the axis. For example, I might want to uh, move this cube just along the green axis, the Y axis in this case. So next thing I do is I press Y and we can see that by pressing Y I can now only move this cube along the Y axis. We can do the same thing with the rotation. Let's choose the X axis this time. I'll press X after pressing R and now we can rotate only around the X axis. If I scale, first I'll scale along all three axes but then if I press the, the Z key, I'll only be able to, to scale along the Z axis. Now we can even do more with this constraint along the axis. If I press, for example, G, and I want now to, to move along all axes except for C, I can press Shift C next. And Shift C will make it so that I can move along X and Y axis, but I'll not change anything about the height of the object, so the Z axis will stay as is. I can also do this in the scale mode. So if I press scale and then I press shift X, for example, you'll see I'm only scaling along two axes. In the rotation mode, we can do something similar. However, a rotation sort of always ends up being along one axis. So I'm not sure if that's too, too useful, if that makes much of a difference. The next thing we can do, which is one addition finally to this mode is, if I'm moving an object and it is rotated, I can press X one time to, to constrain it uh, along this X axis, but I can press X a second time to constrain it along its local X axis. And you see now I'm only able to move this cube along its, its local axis whichever I choose. I just have to press the button twice, for example, G for entering the grab mode, and then X twice, and then I can move it along its own axis. As you can see here, the same thing works for scaling. I press S and then X twice, and I can scale it along this axis, or S and then Y twice, and you can see the result here. Speaking of which, um, this is just a little comment here in the middle. Take this as a side note. If you want to reset the location, rotation or scale of an object, of course you can open this tab on the side and enter exact values as here. However, there is also the, uh, you can also press Alt G, Alt R and Alt S for resetting each of those three transformation types. And you see we have our original cube back, all the transformations are reset to zero and we can start over. Finally, I want to look at how to enter exact values. If you, if you look at the, at the syntax here, we can finally enter exact values to give our transformation a specific value. Uh, so for example, if I move this cube and I want to move it along the y-axis by one unit, all I have to do is I press G, I press Y, and then I press 1. And you can see down here actually, it's hard with, I cannot, wait, I'll, I'll reset. Look at this area here where the, the menus are for the 3D view. I cannot go with my mouse there while I'm in the transformation mode, but you'll see when I press 1, there is a number down here on the bar that shows up. I can type here and I can change it. I can make it 1.5. I can delete these, uh, these numbers too. So instead of guessing just what you have typed and trying, trying to remember what you put in, maybe look down at the bar here and you can see the values that you type. You can switch between minus and plus by tapping the minus key, by the way, or you can just type it right from the beginning, entering the minus first, and then adding a one, something like that. So there you have uh, entering a specific value. However, there is one special case. If we reset the location of the cube back to zero, and I will now press G and I'll constraint my translation along all axes but the z-axis so that we can so we, that we can translate along two axes. I should now be able to enter two values because we have two directions in which we're uh, moving. So if I start typing a number like for example 3 you see that this number was applied along the x-axis. Now I can press tab and you see down here in the bar that I switch to the next uh, variable and now I can add another number. This one will be applied along the y-axis. And then I can press enter once again to apply the coordinates that I entered, which was 3 into the x-axis and minus 1 into the y-axis. 
And so this really um, concludes all you can do. You can also go ahead and look up the Blender Wiki for shortcuts about the pivot point. For example, you can press the, I think this is different for various keyboard layouts, but the dot key um, sets the pivot point to the th to three cursor. Control comma sets it back to mean, mean point and uh, bounding box is just a comma. There's various uh, types. You might want to just take a look at those and memorize those. And for transformation orientation, the ones that I know, I think I told you about, so you can press an axis twice to get into uh, the local axis translation mode. One last uh, transformation mode that I remembered is for rotation. If you press rotation once, of course you rotate in the view of your object. But if you press R a second time directly, you get into this trackball rotation mode into all three axes. This one is also useful sometimes uh, to get more control over the rotation of your object. But pretty much this is um, how you translate objects. Let's finish by doing a quick demonstration in edit mode and how quickly you can edit with these tools. I'm not going to use any handle at all. I'm just going to extrude, for example, make a quick rotation, move it to the side. I can do another extrusion. And you see that this process really increases the speed of, of your workflow. And I'm even on a laptop here. I don't even have all the keys that I wish I would have, like the number pad or something like that. So, so it's very, very strong, uh, a very strong tool to know how to work with, uh, with these keyboard shortcuts. Um, I guess one last technique that I can point out here is that if you're looking at the object from a side view, of course you're res um, restricted to only, only two angles. And a very quick way to enter a side view instead of pressing like the buttons one, three, and seven or so, is you just rotate the view towards an axis so that you're almost in a side view. And then you hold down Alt, and then you release the mouse first, and then you release Alt, and you're in a side view. So I can quickly switch between the views. I can go into top view, I can turn my top view, and so I can select my objects from various angles, um, make, make little edits here and there. I also don't select with the left mouse, uh, with the right mouse button. Instead, I often just use uh, B for box selection. And so these are just kind of notes on the side, which hopefully will increase your speed and modeling. But really, you will get used to all of those. I think if you're modeling a lot, eventually you'll find them anyways. But I think I should, I wanted to give people kind of an insight in, in how somebody models after many years of experience. Uh, maybe you want to ch try to change your habits and how you use these tools. Um, it could help you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I tried to make it really compact. There wasn't much time to talk about anything else. Uh, but there was a lot of information that I'm pretty sure is useful to many of you. So uh, definitely let me know in the comments if any more questions, I can get back to those. And otherwise, thank you for watching and I hope to see you very soon.